Hi, this is Josh Olson, and this is Trailers from Hell, and today we are all for one and one for all with the 1973 version of The Three Musketeers, written by George MacDonald Frazier and directed by the legendary Richard Lester. From the glorious court of Louis XIII to the lustiest taverns of Europe. This was just one of my favorite movies as a kid. I remember the only thing more exciting than seeing it again was seeing the last minute when they showed you scenes that were uh, for the upcoming Four Musketeers because they made two films at the same time and then released them, I think, six months apart. It's just a magnificent film. Much of the tone came from uh, the writing of George MacDonald Frazier, who had written the Flashman novels, but uh, he was, it was a perfect marriage with director Richard Lester, who, of course, did such great films as uh, Juggernaut and Robin and Marion and, of course, A Hard Day's Night. It's, I think, just one of the greatest casts ever assembled for a film. Everyone is perfect. Michael York and Oliver Reed and Richard Chamberlain and Frank Finley as the Musketeers, Raquel Welch and Faye Dunaway as, as the, the various love interests, and the incredibly evil Charlton Heston in just one of the most wonderful roles of his career, one of the few villains he ever played. He's just perfect as Cardinal Richelieu. I uh, worked with a stunt guy many, many years ago who was a sword fighter, and uh, he told me uh, this was one of the great sword fighting movies of all time because uh, on the one hand you have Christopher Lee, who was just a magnificent sword fighter, one of the greatest uh, swordsmen in film uh, comparable to Basil Rathbone. And then you had Oliver Reed, who actually, while not a great swordsman, really fought the way real sword fighters did back in those days. He's clumsy and ungainly and he kind of thuds and, and the whole point is to just chop your enemy into pieces rather than to be uh, slick and, and uh, sophisticated. As a kid, I used to love uh, the James Bond films. Uh, where at the end of the credits uh, they would tell you, you know, watch out for James Bond uh, and in, and then they'd tell you the title of the next film and you'd have a year and a half to just sort of uh, toy with that title and think about how great the film would be. Uh, the Three Musketeers is even better because not only do they tell you the title of the next film, The Four Musketeers, but they actually showed you scenes from the upcoming film. And I just remember going to see the film over and over again. Could not wait to see the fourth. The fourth is uh, just as good as the third, a little bit darker, a little bit more grim, but uh, the two of them make an absolutely wonderful double feature. It's not quite clear at what point in the process the decision came to make two films out of it. Um, I've read interviews with Lester and uh, with the producers and no one can quite nail it down. Originally everybody signed on to do one film and then somewhere down the line the decision was made to make two. The actors at the time weren't aware that they had signed on to do two films, of course. They had just signed on to do one, so there was a bit of a fuss about that, and people had to get paid and so forth. But the end result is wonderful. ...of the greatest adventure of all time, The Three Musketeers. One for all, and all for fun.